You're watching Your View. Thank you for joining us. This is Scott Kaplan and Crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew show on the mightier 1090 AM SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner. Yo, what is up, great friends? Welcome to Kaplan and Crew with no Scott Kaplan today because he is on his way to Loreto, Mexico, a four-day weekend for the name of the show. I'm Alex Padilla, at Alex Padilla 86 on Twitter. He always, like, starts the show, Scott, by saying, you know, YouTube, Twitter, or not Twitter, YouTube, TV, radio, podcast, KaplanandCrew.com, all these places you can find us. But he never gives us any love on our own Twitter pages. So I'm going to start there. At Alex Padilla 86 is my Twitter handle. Me and John Browner will be with you guys for today. And tomorrow, we're taking a three-day weekend. I don't know why. Well, I do know why. I'm going to Oxnard. Browner, what are you doing tomorrow? I probably have some shirts, man. Got to get my got to get the Padillas ready, boy. Boy, well, let's start there. All right, let's start there. I didn't give you this grand intro because I don't really know word for word what Scott says, but it's all good. At Browner's Podcast, that's your Twitter. As long as it's, as long as you in with the good doctors in the house, I'm good. Let's do that. The good the good doc is in the house. Before we get to first thoughts of the of the day, because I have a place I would like to start because I have a shout out to a certain uh, group of people that I want to oh. start the show off with. But yesterday, <laughs> I don't know what time this was. We were we were done with the show. We were hanging out. All of a sudden, we get an unsolicited text. From the owner of the new Mighty Air 1090, Bill Hagen. Which, by the way, side note. Did you know he's 72 years old? Have no. You, did you not? Were you not part of the email? We're doing the first ever Mighty Air 1090 getaway on May 1st. And it's celebrating his 73rd birthday. I didn't. Listen, I didn't read that far down. When yeah. I saw what it was about and I saw the situation. Would I attend this thing? And then I stopped reading. I didn't even get to the part where he was 72. 72. I, and listen, I know he's never been on this show. Oh, maybe he has. Has he been on the show? No. No, he hasn't been on the show. I know that most of you, probably all of you, have no idea what Bill Hagen looks like. But if you saw a picture of him and you're like, he's 72, you wouldn't believe it. I thought he was in his his 50s dude just consider him the voice from charlie's angels that guy who always just said hey angels that's bill hagan okay now as i'm saying this out loud i really want to read this again because i want to make sure that i'm not aging him. he's not 72 he cannot be 72 years old oh no way no here goes please join us for a small friends family and the mightier 1090 group aboard the Mission Bell for a trip to the Mexican Coronado Islands. This boat holds 46 people and we'll have a group of probably less than 20. We will be celebrating Bill Hagen Jr.'s 73rd birthday as well. Oh my God, you old bastard. What are you, what? 73 wow. years old? That's well, crazy. He, he doesn't look anything close to that. So no, props to not. him for whatever he, these radio waves are keeping him young. Yeah, dude, shout out to Bill Hagen, and happy birthday when we get there. I'm not sure if I'm going to make it on that boat, because the 12 hours on a boat doesn't sound that fun to me. But either way, that was a side note. So Bill texts us yesterday, and he's just egging Browner on. <laughs> and listen, on this show, we all know that it's normally me and Scott versus Browner. That's just the way it rolls. That's fine. No big deal. Unless you have a problem with it, JB. I, no, mean, I got listen, kinda... listen, listen. I'm the man of the people. I got support in these streets. That's all that matters. I mean, I hit these streets right. and people hit me with a what up? What up, Doc? Yeah. And every time like one person te uh, tweets you, I'm like, oh, man. Like you just gave him more <laughs> fuel to the fire. All it takes is one. I and he's like, I got peoples. That's I got it. peoples. We out here. So, so Bill, because I, Bill watches the show, Bill's on the YouTube chat all the time. He's always saying, what's up to the great friends? Um, he listens to us all the time. He's very intently listening to us, I guess, as well, because this week, Browner uh, didn't really give me a nickname, but gave me a nickname. Mm -hmm. What is it, Browner? P Padilla, L.A. Padilla, L.A. Padilla. The M, boy, what? See, you're saying Al right there, so you got to flip it, flip it, flip it's, it, invert it's, it. It's, it's weird when you're on. It's weird. I know, I know. So either way, there you go. 
There you go. There you go. L.A. There it is. So my last name is Padilla, L.A. And whatever, that's what Brian Ordick named me because he says I jumped out the wagon uh, when I said Tatis did not. When Tatis got hurt, the Padres would not be uh, World Series contenders if he was out for the year. That's what I said. Brown ran with it. Whatever. No big deal. And then this week, all of a sudden, this week, all of a sudden, you're calling me a Dodger fan for whatever reason. And I am a Laker fan. I'm not hiding that. I've always said that. So Bill Hagen, because he hates me, I'm assuming. Rightfully, this, rightfully so. Rightfully so. Sends this mock-up to us, me, Scott, and John, and says, who wants one? Padilla in the building. That's what I would talk about, <laughs> Hagen. Out the window, okay? Out the window. Y'all need to start selling these things pronto. P-A-D-I-L-L. La, no. okay, Padilla. <laughs> get them things on the presses. Every time we get a shirt from Bill, it's in a sweet packaging. I can't wait to get that purple Padilla package, baby. Now, here's the, here's the really crappy part for me. I love that shirt. It's a great shirt. <laughs> I love that shirt. It's a great shirt. It's a shirt. great shirt. But I'm not a Dodger fan, so I'll never wear that shirt. I'll never wear that shirt. I swear to you, I would never wear it, but it's a dope shirt. And I texted to my buddies who are Dodger fans. They're like, dude, that's a dope ass shirt. You got to get that shirt. So now I'm in a conundrum because I kind of want it, but I'll never wear it. But I'm going to put it back here somewhere. Listen, I can put it somewhere. Between that one and the Kaplan one, we're going to have coming eventually. These shirts will be either if I have Fire. to if I have to print these myself, these shirts will get made. Okay. One way or the other, these shirts will get made. Speaking of shirts. By the way, somebody stole my willpower, Sam, and put it on a T-shirt. Y'all see me hating out there? Nope. But Is it a logo? So, no, it's just will. It's just it's willpower. It's a picture yeah, of Will. It's still a logo. I didn't steal no logo either. Don't put me involved in that. Bill, shout out to you, Bill. <laughs> shout out to you, seventy-three-year-old Bill, the voice of Charlie's Angels. You are Charlie in a Charlie's Angels situation. This is the greatest shirt design we've had on the show, even though it's the second design. But nevertheless, it's the, it's the greatest design we've had on the show. It is. Look at it. It's pretty hot fire. That's pretty dope. It's pretty dope. So we need to figure out a way to get these, this either designed to me or get these shirts to me. I will definitely hang one up prominently in the Seven Mile uh, Casino Studios. So that's that's how we're starting the show today. Shout out to Bill Hagen. Um, even though it's against me, I could take a joke. I love it. Um, Browner, when it's good, it's good. When it's good, it's good. You know what's? You know what would be great, Browner? If you wear the shirt. Patilla. What? What do you think I'm not? Let, listen, let that shirt. Listen, let that <laughs> shirt come here one way or the other. Or I get that design. Padilla will be rocked by Monday morning. All right. So we're here. It's a Thursday afternoon. Kaplan and Crew. Check us out. KaplanandCrew.com. That is home base. I listen to Cousin Nancy. So if you need us anywhere, Apple, Spotify, Google, radio, YouTube, Twitter, your view, anywhere that you want us, go to kaplanandcrew.com. That's where you could find the show. And that's where you could find the three of us. Our Instagram's on there. Our Twitter's on there. Everything is on there. And all of our great sponsors that you will see flashing behind me once I hit play on my PlayStation because I have it paused right now on the Corky sign. So... With all that being said, shout out Bill Hagen. Thank you for that. That was funny. Let's start it off. Browner, six foot seven, twisted steel, sex appeal, the good doc, and whatever else he calls you, bringing the street cred from the podcast shed. What else am I missing? Brown saw. The brown saw. The black Donald Trump. Here he al- is. I will also accept Dr. Brown saw. Yeah, I like the good doc. The good doc That's is right. in the building. Start us off. Hey, man, look, Mark Cuban, uh, you great, bro. You smart, you energetic, you young, you vibrant. You, you, you're you what I would like in an owner. You, Balmer, um, I like the Kings ownership group. Young, innovative guys trying to take the NBA in a positive direction that looks like it's trying to hook in more viewers, more casual viewers, because I understand that you understand the business of basketball. But now you out here lying in these streets, bro, and I can't let this happen. So you're saying now that the play-in tournament is either unnecessary or stupid because Luka Doncic said it was stupid because you're going to have to play in it. So you play 72 games to play another game. Yeah, bro, because that's how they set it up. You know why they set it up that way? Because of the pandemic. So 
I actually thought the play-in tournament was a great idea for the NBA because the seventh and the eighth seed usually get swept anyway unless there's an injury in a first or second place team. So y'all probably going to get swept out the building anyway, so it don't matter who gets swept out the building. But in this particular situation, the Warriors are in that mix. I think the Pelicans are in that mix as well, and those are guys the NBA needs on television. So the fact that Mark Cuban is now coming out after he – this thing passed unanimous, by the way. You really can't pass anything unanimous in this country at all. And they passed this unanimously for the play-in tournament to occur again this year. And now all of a sudden, Mark Cuban got amnesia. Bro, you own it. Just own it. Own it. You voted for it because at the time, you thought y'all was going to be top three, top four seed, and y'all wouldn't have to be in the danger of playing the Warriors in the first round of the play-in game. But since Luka didn't live up to MVP and Porzingis breaking like a twig every other week, I don't know who hurt more, him or Anthony Davis. So now you in this, you in a dog fight just to make the playoffs. Own it. How about you win some games? Great shot last night, Donkic, but you're gonna have to keep it up, Playboy. Because until then, Mark Cuban, you on the hit list, bro. Stop whining. All right, I'm gonna do what Scott does and be like, you started in the middle. I always do. You started in the middle again. So let's start from the beginning <laughs> because I do have this as part of the stuff I wanted to get to today because I think it's incredibly hypocritical. I agree with you, but let's start from the beginning. The NBA last year did a play-in tournament in the bubble format, correct? Correct. And everybody way, seemed to that, enjoy it. That was probably the highlight of the actual bubble with the exception of uh, um, uh, Donovan Mitchell and, and, and uh, uh, Murray's performance when right. Murray got super hot against the Clippers and threw them out and got hot uh, and Mitchell got hot against the Nuggets. So this year they decided to play a 72-game schedule in a very short period of time. Because it they also started late. They started, what, Christmas? Yes. So they literally play every other day, which is unheard of in the NBA. Mm -hmm. In the NBA, you normally have, sometimes you'll have like a five-day break. Sometimes you'll, there's many like a, every three days you play. This is every other day that they're playing on top of back-to-backs. The most days off that teams have right now are two days off in between games. That's the most that they have. So it was a very tight, tight schedule. And they, they decided for whatever reason, you know, we love to play in tournament. Let's keep the play in tournament. Let's do it again. Now, I don't even know how many teams make the play in tournament. If, if you're the seven seed to what? Ten seed. You know? So the seven, eight, nine, ten to get the final two playoff spots. Is that how this works? Yes. So right now, if you look at the NBA standings, you got the Mavericks seventh, the Grizzlies eighth, the Warriors ninth, and the Spurs tenth. And they all are separated between three and a half games. And Mark Cuban said this uh, yesterday, saying, quote, in a regular season of 82 games where we aren't playing 30 plus games in six weeks, then it might have been OK. But the, the compression of so many games into so few days makes this an enormous mistake. And I'm actually going to agree with Browner, which is rare, because why say this now? Right. <laughs> why say this now? Because you're in it. And you're probably not getting out of it. That's why. Because the Mavericks thought they were going to be hot fire with Luka and whoever else. And that they were going to make this. And they're not. And if you and I don't even understand it. It's the, it's the equivalent of the wild card in baseball. You play 162 games to go play one? Makes no sense to me. So, Browner, I agree with you, bro. About time you got wise, bro. This ain't, this ain't that hard. This really isn't that hard. Every other every sport, baseball particularly, I would be I would hate to play a wild card baseball game as a player, but it's great for the fans. And in this particular situation, if you're seven and you're eight, seven just has to beat eight. So all they have to do is do what they did last night. You beat Memphis one time, and then Memphis plays the winner of the play in the seven and the, the nine and ten game. It's not that hard, bro. When if you're supposed to be better, win the game. Win the game. I when rules get set up and agreed upon by all by the ownership group. You had your chance to voice your opinion on how stupid this was then, Mark Cuban. You didn't do it. So don't double back now saying how dumb this is because, oh, it's a condensed schedule and it's not 82 games. Because if it was 82 games, then you'd be saying it'd be stupid to be playing more games after playing a long 82-game <laughs> season. Yeah. So pick one, bro. Pick one. Pick a lane, man. Pick a lane. And People want to start blaming like Jamal Murray's ACL tear that on the it. schedule. It ain't it. 
That ain't it. It's not it. An ACL tear is not a wear and tear injury. It is a fluke, terrible injury. Right. Anthony Davis's calf and Achilles that never got a chance to heal in the offseason, that is a wear and tear right. injury. Not an ACL tear. So I understand that losing Jamal Murray sucks. For the NBA, it sucks. He was a rising star. Last year in the playoffs, he tore it up. He made a name for himself, and it's terrible. But that's not the reason he got hurt. Not that specific injury. So I, I don't think the plan is necessary. But to start coming out now, when you're in the plan, it's just hypocritical. But I will say, last night, dope-ass shot, Luca. Dope-ass shot. Got to get it in. Here's Luca. Gets it away. It's good! A Doncic dagger! Was that the, with the, like the least exciting game winner of all time? Look, it was man, just so casual. I got to tell you, all right, this is this is going to sound normal for me, but. Hater. I'm not sold on this dude, man. <laughs> Hater, dude. I'm, I'm not this, And you know why? You know why? This goes back to, was it two days ago? When I played the pregame shot he made with the soccer skill, you start hating on him. Look, man, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sold on this guy. If you, if you watch him play, if you watch him play, he's fantastic. Mm -hmm. He complains at every single play. He cries at every single call or non-call. He is a. Do you know how sometimes? At one point, James Harden was almost like unwatchable because he was just trying to get fouled. He wasn't playing basketball. Now, magically on the Nets, he's playing basketball. He's not trying to get fouled anymore. So that's how I knew the whole thing was like a setup. Luka Doncic complains on every single play. It's like the Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan, Chris Paul Clippers. It became unwatchable because every dead ball, they were complaining. Every turnover, they were complaining. Every missed layup, they were complaining. This guy's complaining on plays that have nothing to do with him. And so it's just, he's great. Again, he's great. Not my cup of tea, okay? He's a great player. He's going to do great things. I don't see him as being some kind of multiple-time MVP because he can't guard anybody, and that's part of winning MVP. But yeah. this whole thing about, oh, he's fantastic to watch. Nah, not I really. Think the problem, I, I just think the problem with him is the fact that he's got nobody else on that team. In, well, the, no, NBA, no, no. in the NBA, you need at least two superstars. Chris Porzingis ain't it. Bro, Christoph Porzingis is a NBA superstar. No, he cannot he get healthy. I would listen. Oh, oh, Christoph because he because he can't get healthy, dude. Christoph Porzingis is as good as Anthony Davis. Get as healthy. as good right. as Anthony Davis. Uh, hold on, time out. Joe and Neil, we got our first hot take of the day. That is a hot freaking take. Are you crazy? Okay. Kristaps Porzingis is as good as Anthony Davis. Is that yes. exactly what you said? Listen, mark mark my words. When healthy, if ever healthy, but when wow. healthy, Kristaps Porzingis is just as good as Anthony Davis. He's a better shooter. He's a better rim protector. Anthony Davis is a better overall defender. He can defend the perimeter. He can switch pick and rolls a lot better than Porzingis can. But protecting the rim... Porzingis is a better shot blocker, and he's a better shooter than Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis is tougher, also as brittle, so they're equally brittle. Don't say as brittle. Don't How say so? as brittle. Don't say as brittle. Bruce Porzingis hasn't played a full season in his life. In his life. Don't say uh, as brittle. Is, he, is Anthony Davis, does he have nicks and, and, and misses the occasional game here and there? Yes. Has he missed a very long time right now? Yes. But Porzingis is always out for the year, so don't say as brittle. If you want to, if you want to, everything that you just said, if you want to believe that as crazy and hot as it is, go for it. I think it's going under the Browner hot take for 2021. That's for damn sure, dude. That's a hot, hot take. This is a first round matchup. I wish we could see, but because of LeBron and AD's injuries, <laughs> you we're want not the Lakers. You want the Lakers to play every team, and it doesn't matter. Like they literally, you whoever the Lakers end up playing, you're like, this is the matchup we want to see. You want them to play the Clippers. You want them to play. Who else did you just say? The Mavs? You want, to, you want to play every team. What I would like for them to do is play a team where your second best player did not just get hurt. That's what I would prefer. All right. Well, hey, listen, we only have about a minute here in this first segment, and I want to get to my first thought. And I know that's crazy being 19 minutes into the segment. My first thought is this. Shout out, Philadelphia 76er fans. Shout out. 
because yesterday the Sixers beat the Nets. I'm not here to talk trash about that. I understand the Nets have a lot of injuries. KD didn't play. Harden didn't play. The the Nets best player did not play. So I will say, (laughs) shout out to the Nets fans because at the end of the game, did you see this? No. At the end of the game, Embiid was shooting free throws and it was over. The the Sixers had already kind of locked the game in and they start chanting, KD sucks. And you got (laughs) to see KD's reaction. Hits a so they start chanting and look at KD's reaction. He's just, they start chanting. He looks up like, are they chanting KD sucks? <laughs> He's like, what the hell did I do? <laughs> <laughs> Yo! Oh, <man. laughs> Yo, that's going to start happening everywhere yeah. now. People that are just going to start chanting KD sucks when you beat them. That's, Dude, that's that is fantastic. awesome. Dude, that's awesome. Listen, and KD, if you don't, Get booed, you're not good. Everybody knows that. So shout out. To, but stat made I legit bro was laughing last night when I saw that on Twitter. It was hilarious. So shout out to 76er fans. I hate MB and the Sixers, but those fans, they get the shout out for me today. We got lots coming up today. Coming up, Jason Lawhead. Coming up, Beer Friday. We're taping that today. Lots to do, lots to get to. Padres wrapped up against the Pirates, and they play the Dodgers. Huge series coming up at Petco. We'll talk about that next. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM, a new generation of radio. SoCal sports talk. Kaplan and crew tonight is brought to you by BMW San Diego, your certified BMW dealer serving drivers throughout San Diego and their surrounding areas. Arash Markazi here inviting you to catch my show, The Arash Markazi Show, on the Mightier 1090. We are on every Monday through Friday from noon to 1 p.m. Pacific time. Join me and producer extraordinaire Jihei Wiley where we chop up Los Angeles sports and try not to piss too many people off. The all-new and Mightier 1090. Join Erica Cardenas on Doing More as she introduces you to ordinary people working side-by-side to confront tremendous challenges and make a positive impact in their community. Hi, I'm Erica Cardenas. Join me on the next Doing More as we celebrate the many accomplishments of women during Women's History Month. Doing more Sunday and Monday night on Your View. Sponsored by The Barnes Firm. Partnering with Shelter to Soldier and saving lives two at a time. Visit thebarnesfirm.com slash shelter to soldier and help save more lives. I've been a part of this community for a long time and giving back is what we do. That's why I'm so excited to tell you about the San Diego Giving Back Raffle. A benefit for Ronald McDonald House Charities of San Diego. Grand prize is this $4 million luxury home, or you could win a car, vacation, or cash. Everyone is guaranteed to win a prize. And you'll feel good knowing your raffle purchase goes to help families like the Lechugas. Get your tickets now for the San Diego Giving Back Raffle. City in Motion is brought to you by McDonald's. Stop by your local participating McDonald's now through April 25th and make a donation or visit walkforkids.org to support. Hi, I'm Vince Bryson, CEO of Ronald McDonald House Charities of Southern California. Welcome to the 2020 Virtual Walk for Kids. coronavirus pandemic will not stop our show because we are still going to walk for these kids. You guys want to do the walk for kids virtually this year? Yeah! Today is walk for kids, you guys, um, virtually. So we love it, love it, love it. Let's get this walk started. We are going to start. So I'm going to be walking around my backyard. Doing the 5K walk. We're here in front of the beautiful Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. So we are getting ready to do lap three. We're here to send our support. I love the excitement. I love the energy. Let's keep it going. If you want to know the reason why I'm walking, it's because I care about the kids and the families that stay at our house. I walk for the Los Angeles from McDonough House for kids like me. 
so they can have a place to call their home away from home. To me, the Ronald McDonald House means love, care, hope, and support. The families and children of RMHC need our help and support now more than ever. So thank you for joining our virtual walk and continuing to support our Ronald McDonald House even during these difficult times. Thank you so much for coming together, for showing that we can unite and be together even though we're not at our respective locations. Thank you for participating in this virtual walk. Thank you. Thank you everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for all your help and support and stay well. Ronald McDonald House Charities of SoCal gives families with sick kids the best medicine, each other. Stop by your local McDonald's today and make a donation or visit walkforkids.org to support. City in Motion, highlighting great things in our community like Ronald McDonald House Charities. Give families with sick kids the best medicine, each other. Pete Gray here, inviting you to catch my show, Let's Talk Hookup, every Saturday and Sunday, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific Time. For over 30 years, we've been the voice of the fishing community for Southern California, and so glad to be back on the big stick. The all-new and mightier 1090. We have a term for typical cheese-filled, grease-covered, regret-inducing takeout. That's why dinner from El Pollo Loco is always fire-grilled, freshly prepared, feel-good food. The $20 Familia Dinner from El Pollo Loco. Are you living in an underserved community and facing adversity? Do you have a desire to start or grow your own business? San Diego State University's Lavin Entrepreneurship Center, the Center for Leadership and Entrepreneurial Studies, and community partners invite you to participate in our community boot camp. The boot camp provides intense, hands-on exposure to the fundamentals of launching and growing a successful venture. Register today at leadershipcentersw.org. Join Erica Cardenas on Doing More as she introduces you to ordinary people working side by side to confront tremendous challenges and make a positive impact in their community. Hi, I'm Erica Cardenas. Join me on the next Doing More as we celebrate the many accomplishments of women during Women's History Month. Doing More, Sunday and Monday night on Your View. Sponsored by The Barnes Firm, partnering with Shelter to Soldier and saving lives two at a time. Visit thebarnesfirm.com slash shelter to soldier and help save more lives. Adios, love handles. Adios, couch. Adios, quarantine 15. Say adios to the quarantine bod with pollo fit bowls made with fire grilled chicken and organic super greens from El Pollo Loco. Kaplan and Crew tonight presents Sports in a Minute. It's the last week of the abbreviated spring high school football season, and there are some great matchups happening in the region. The marquee matchup is between Modern Day and St. John Bosco on Saturday. Now, Modern Day is ranked number one in the state, while St. John Bosco is ranked number two. And with no official playoffs happening, this game has been dubbed the unofficial state championship game. Between the two teams, 59 players have three-star recruit ratings, including modern-day cornerback and USC commit Damani Jackson, who is ranked at number three overall in the 2022 class by 247 Sports. In the San Diego section, a big game, Carlsbad will be taking on Granite Hills. Now, Carlsbad is ranked number 10 in the state, number two in the San Diego section. This spring, they've outscored opponents 170 to 21. Both of these teams, Carlsbad and Granite Hills, are undefeated heading into this matchup. I'm Haley Stasiak. That's your sports in a minute. Now back to more Kaplan and Crew tonight. Attention, all dogs, cats, horses, tortoises, birds, pigs, and all other pets. Get your family members to sit, stay, and watch Animal Zone every Saturday at 9 p.m. right here on this channel and at AnimalZone.org. Tune in Saturdays at 9 p.m. to watch Animal Zone right here on Your View.
We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM, a new generation of radio. SoCal sports talk. You're watching Kaplan and crew tonight powered by the mightier 1090 in your view, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. Great friends, welcome back. This is Kaplan and Crew.com. This is not Kaplan and Crew.com. This is a Kaplan and Crew show. You can find us at Kaplan and Crew.com. That's home base. That's home base now. Kaplan and Crew.com. I'm Alex Padilla, along my boy, along with my boy John Browner. What's up, people? You will never guess <laughs> who is on their own show yeah. when they're supposed to be on vacation. Yeah. He was specifically told, do not show up. Yeah. So this is let's just let's let's just from because Browner jumps in the middle of everything, right? So let's just let's get you started. Like we talked about on the show, Scott Kaplan taking a four day weekend in Loreto, Mexico. Bo, Bo, he told, he told Scott Kaplan, do not text us, do not text us, enjoy your weekend, do not even reach out to us. Well, Audible, change of plans because right now, joining us, mm-hmm. I think from the TJ airport. I right. think it's Scott Kaplan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what's up? What the hell, oh, dude? Really what the hell? All right, let me tell you what happened. Can you put your phone up? Can <laughs> yeah. you put your phone up a little bit? Because we just see a lot of table right now. Not okay. Okay. All right, let me tell you what happened. Okay. I'm in the airport right now in TJ. But here's where it all started. It all started last night at Ken's Sushi Workshop. This guy, Ken, sits me and my buddies at the bar, sushi bar, five guys, and proceeds to get everybody annihilated drunk, keep piling on the, the most ridiculous, most expensive food, and he got us all messed up. You feel me? Okay. I love it. Following. Okay. Okay. So now I go home. I pass out. Um, thankfully, one of my buddies had a car service pick us up. It wasn't Uber. It was like a regular car service, I think. And um, I wake up this morning, I pack my stuff, I'm ready to go. I get to Rachel's house. Um, she's not really ready to go. Was she but, with you yesterday? You know, no, this was a guy's thing. Okay. Yeah. So then we leave, and she wants to go drive to the Tijuana airport. Not the American side, the cross border. She wants to go to the TJ airport. Is that true or false? That's a mistake. Alex just said that's a mistake. Well, what did you tell us yesterday? Well, well, no. So here's the issue. Here's the issue. I did not prepare. I, I did not prepare. You know, uh, fail to prepare, prepare to fail. John Wooden. I am telling you right now, I did nothing other than say, yeah, Rach, whatever you want to do. You talked to these guys all day, every day. They didn't tell you that was a bad idea. She says, I talked to you guys all day, every day. Okay, you well, guys- did you... Did you tell her before we get thrown under the bus for some reason? Uh, yeah. Did you tell her Not that, the first time. that you were extremely confident yesterday? Like you were just like, yeah, we're going to go. We have the, we have Century, we have Global Entry, and we're okay. totally confident. Let's, let's also, Alex. let's also revisit this. You were speaking in Spanish yesterday. You were so confident that you could get across the border and get this done, sir. Yeah, Rachel, now that you have an AirPod in, I don't know if you heard this, yesterday on the show, Scott was incredibly confident in your plan of driving to Mexico, parking in Mexico. I ha- Oh, she has a Sentry in her car. We have global entry. We're totally fine. So, A, why would I even say, like, what are you doing, bro? That's a terrible idea. I, he was so confident in it that we didn't even question it. We're like, oh, cool. He was as confident as one of Browner's hot takes. Yeah. I think the mic is on the other AirPod, though. Oh. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So I came to her house this morning with a big giant hangover, right? She and I drive from Carmel Valley down past the border. We get down into TJ and I'm trying to find, I'm following the signs, Aeropuerto. Oh, good luck. using, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Alex is laughing at me. He goes, good luck. (laughs) The signs suck. Okay. Hey, to me, hermanos de Mexico, your signs suck, dog. You know? Yeah, yeah. So no one so follows then, them. So we can't find we can't find the airport. 
let me tell you, it was like driving in a video game. It was so unbelievable. <laughs> it was so great. Who's driving? Who's Dude, driving? I was me, me. Okay. Me. And Rachel's big ass like Lexus, which desperately needs new tires. And dude, I am <laughs> jumping over curbs. I am driving as aggressively as everybody there. At one point, I, I merge in. This motorcycle guy behind me has to slam on his brakes and skid. You know, he doesn't go down. But then he comes, pulls up right next to me. He's like, "Yo, man, what's up?" I'm like, "Hey, bro, I'm sorry." You know. So, <laughs> oh, hermano, so, disculpa, so wait, disculpa. Wait, wait. So we finally, finally, finally get to the airport, dude. Forty minutes later. Forty minutes later. Okay. Right. We we finally get to the airport after all this off roading, after all this battling, like New York driving. Right. The parking lot at the airport is closed. There's no parking at the airport. What? Full. Yeah. No. Yeah, there's no parking. Yeah. So what did you do to no the car? Parking. So she's like, let's just park on the road and walk. I'm like, you can't leave oh, this car mind. here. TJ. Wow. You don't want that car when you get yeah. back? It's a Wait, Lexus. You don't want the car when you get back. Dude, okay. okay. And you ready? And she wanted to leave her laptop in the car. She didn't want to bring her laptop. She was, uh, I mean, dude, she was like, has I'm Rachel, leave my car here. Has Rachel ever left North County before? That's my question. As we lose Scott. Little, little oh. buffering here. Wait, little buffering. My question is, has yeah. Rachel ever yeah. left North County before? What is that reason? Oh, dude. <laughs> and we lose him again. Ooh, oh, oh, no. Oh, <laughs> she's good. She's got really good common sense. She, it's just that we thought it was going to be easy. And then when we got there and there was no parking, that really screwed us up. And so it was like, let's make a run for the border. Only it was going north. We were frozen. We're buffering. We can hear you, but but we can't. Now oh, you guys you are frozen. Nothing. We can only hear you. Okay, That's okay. all. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. It'll come back. Yeah. So, so I, I, I did. When did you? Was there no notification that the parking was closing? Okay, he's gone. Yeah, we lost. What him. a story! Oh my god! Oh, oh my! The fact that I think they would have been good. The no parking situation absolutely mm -hmm. torpedoed mm -hmm. the entire thing. So oh. I'm, let's take a guess here. Let's take a guess because I think if the parking lot I can is imagine, full, dude, I could have. I could have met. No, he said it was closed, not full. He said it was well, closed. she said it was full. She said it was full. Okay. So I'm not really sure. Maybe there's loss in translation in the buffering there. But my assumption then is that they have to cross back to the U.S. and then go to the border crossing in Otai or wherever it's at. Park there. Pay for it there because you have and to pay to on. cross the border and then go to the airport. Oh, it must have been like the amazing race at some point where they're just like running around trying oh, to catch dude. the flight on a particular and let time. Me, let me let you guys in on a little on a little Scott Kaplan inside information. When when the plan doesn't go Ooh. with the plan. Oh, oh panic. Oh, the panic tipper. meter is crazy. Like right now, I, I think he's panicking that, that it buffered. I, I'll, I'll, I've been right. I'm willing to I'm willing to bet money that he dropped off right now that he's panicking. That, yes. Yeah. Wow. I, listen. Dude. I I would have loved to have a dash cam in that car. Oh my car gosh, man! As they were realizing, we're not gonna make it. He, maybe she keeps him calm, but oh, I, if, if we were in the car, oh, he'd be losing it. Oh my, oh my god, he'd be the curse words. Talk about curb jump. It would have been Grand Theft Auto driving if we would have been in that car. I'm trying. I'm texting him right now because I really want to finish this story. I want to see if he'll if he wants to jump over to a Zoom. So I think we're going to – let's hit a pause real quick here, and we're going to jump to Zoom. So hold on, everybody. Let's finish okay. the story. All right. So we left off, Scott, uh, before you dropped off there. Yeah. And we were confused if, A, the parking lot was full or if the parking lot was closed. We think full because the, the um, gate was, was closed, and I could see there were cars in the parking lot, you know? Yeah. Okay, and then but, we guessed that you had to then cross back to the U.S. side right. and go to the border crossing from there. Is that what had to happen? Right, right, right. But, but in leaving the airport and realizing we weren't going to get parking, we, Rachel put in her phone uh, the cross-border something. Yeah. The wait times? Yeah. No, we went the opposite direction. We were going to like some museum. Yeah, we went the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> we went the wrong way again, for sure. Okay. We definitely went the wrong way. And then once we finally got into the century, 
Can you hear me? Maybe you can hear both yes. of us this way. Just talk um, like each other's um, mouths. Blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he ended up getting in the line to get back on the border, and he he went like up the side of the road and got in in front of a Range Rover, and we finally got through. Fast. Fast. Which, by the way, if you didn't have Sentry, you would still be in line trying to cross back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Now, yeah. We, we, so we got out our... We have a real question. Rachel can answer this question. Scott, you please don't say anything. Let Rachel fairly answer this question. We know we've ridden with Scott before. I've been on one trip with him. Alex has been on several trips with him. We well know his panic meter goes off the charts when something doesn't go correct. This seems like many things were not going correct. Tell us on a scale of <laughs> one to 10. Her face, dude. How, how well did he do? Because I'm under the assumption that you calm him down. Alex and I don't have that same effect on him. Yeah. We probably, I probably make it worse because I don't help out. So what was he like yeah. as things were not going like speaking, according to plan? Speaking from experience as the one who, honestly, on the inside of me, I may be panicking, but if I show any panic outside, we're screwed. We're done. We're, it's over. It's so like a bear I, attack. So on the outside, I'm always like, don't trip, dude. No big deal. Like, what <laughs> do you do? in those situations. I'm going to say that I'm glad that uh, Tori Holistics is with us. Because <laughs> 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 at the height of the moment, right after the motorcycle guy flipped us off, over almost hitting him, he pulled out the face. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. Oh. Um, he did a pretty good job. You know, I basically said, if we don't, if we still like each other at the end of this, we might be okay because uh, temperatures were rising for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was, oh I, was, I, was, I was hoping yeah. it was a dash cam camera or something to just record the expressions of his face as it was like things were not going to work out. And he was like, oh, wait, there's no parking. I could imagine just the language when he found yeah. out there was no parking. Oh, Dude, it would actually have been great video if, if yeah. I would have had video like uh, Get closer. It, it, really, it really is amazing how you go from the United States and you're in Mexico and you know it. The way people drive, mm-hmm. the looks of buildings, the way people are walking the streets. I mean, you realize you've gone from the suburbs of San Diego to a whole new country, a yeah. different speed, a different vibe. And you know it right away. Yeah. And nobody understood a word we were saying. Is Where's the parking? Why is the parking closed? Where do we go? <laughs> Alex, we Scott, where's the Scott, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Scott, wait, whoa, whoa. Scott, whoa. Scott, Scott, what happened to the Espanol, baby? Estacionamiento, donde esta? Oh, momento. Si, si, si. Hermano, hermano, uh, que paso? Now you're speaking Spanish? How? <laughs> okay, look, so I had to be the calm one of the group. You know, damn, that's I know that wow, damn, dude. wow, you know? wow, Rachel. What the I hell, mean, man? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it wasn't good, it was oh. not good. So, so hold on, here. let's 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 take a real quick step back. So, what time was your original flight? 9 42. What time did you 9:42. get to the TJ parking lot? 8, 10, yeah. Okay, so you got there in plenty of time. If it yes. was if it was originally as planned. Right. So yeah, maybe like 8.30. We easily had an hour. We had an hour and 15 minutes, I think, when we realized the parking. We saw the parking structure, and then, of course, you have to go past it two miles to make a, a little right. left turn to go to get into it. But- then wait, find out it's close. Wait, she wants to go. She wants to go park offsite now. She wants to go on some dirt road and park offsite. I'm like, wait, we're gonna now pull our luggage through these dirt roads because we're here. <laughs> I start asking, are you doing? can we park at a red on a red curb in Mexico? <laughs> like, we're gonna leave your car here. She's like, yeah, let's go. I'm like, listen, How we gotta I- get back to America ASAP. Okay, get our car. Yeah, park at the cross border. Walk in the way they designed it so that it could be easy for American people to use this. Yeah. And that's what we need to do. And honestly, we went through all the stuff. We Can you grab the mic? Times. Can you grab the mic? Sorry, dude. Yeah. Okay. There you go. So, right there, right there, right there. So, right there. So we went through we went through all the luggage and everything, dude. And we get to the gate and you know how the, the plane pulls away? Um, the plane was separated from the uh, 
the walkway, the jetway. And it was like three feet separated. And Rachel's like, can't we get in? And I'm like, oh no. Oh no. And she's like, and, and she's like, but the parking situation at the TJ airport cost us to be late. So we had to turn around and come. I'm like, oh no, this isn't going to go well. Because there's no chance this, this thing's coming back. Right, no right. Chance so you going. actually got to your gate to see your plane. To watch it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, we got there to see the plane pull away. This what happened. Yeah. I think I was crying. Um, I have one really, really, really important question. Right. Can someone Google? Can someone Google where you get a margarita in the Tijuana Airport? <laughs> Isn't it like everywhere? Uh, I see here that Johnny Rocket. No. So okay, so you miss your 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 plane is pulling away. Classic TV moment, movie moment. Oh. Oh, like classic. Sitting there. I'm like, Please right. But it's up. right there. What do you mean it's I can't get on? It's right there. I'll jump three feet and get in there. Oh, we right. we have one too. Me, I'm like, I'm like still huffing and puffing. I have to pee so freaking bad. I had to pee for like I an hour and a half. Well, the yeah, fact, like, all right, she's gonna run. The Go fact ahead. that you guys even got that close. How, the fact how? that you guys even got that close is crazy. I was carrying two of the bags and running in my flip flops. Right. How? was the scene with you guys running was it more home alone or was it more amazing race yeah it was yeah. more amazing race yeah because they're in like they're in like vacation clothes dude she's she's in a yeah. tank top and yeah. flip-flops yeah, <laughs> yeah. And two over back. I'm like, We're gonna go yeah. so so what now so what happens when when what you're now? at the gate the flight attendant is like dude we're not gonna pull this plane back so what what, what, what what's Peace the out. process then uh, the process then became, let's regroup. And and for me, it was like, let's take a deep breath and, and take a step back here for a moment. You know, like, let's let's just chill. Real deep breath, and, a couple deep breaths. Plan, plan. Think about what we're going to do. Think about what we're going to do here. So now we've been sitting here, and I downloaded the app for the not, another airline as a flight later in the day. I booked a flight down there this afternoon. But now we're sitting here for the next, you know, however many hours in the TJ airport, you know? So, so you for sure are going today still. Yeah. Yeah. Like I was saying, Hey, we can go tomorrow. Um, and we can like go down to Rosarito and hang out for the afternoon. I've never done that. Um, but then I had to think about crossing the border again and what happens when I leave, you know? And I'm like, Oh no, that's a bad idea. You now have so, PTSD again. You'll have PTSD next yeah. time you cross the border. Yeah. I thought about the last time I was driving in Mexico, which was in Monterrey, but I wasn't driving and, I, and people who were knew where they were going. Although I didn't know where they were going. I was scared out of my mind, you know? <laughs> yeah, he thought he was going to get kidnapped. I remember that. Yeah. I thought that at the time. Yeah. Yeah. So. So we're here for the next couple of hours. So if you're at the TJ airport, go say hi to Scott and Rachel. We'll meet you halfway on the cross-border whatever bridge. Scott, yesterday, I don't know if, so I I had a, not nothing like you had, but I don't know if, have you guys ever heard of this? I'm going to Cabo in July and I was booking my flights yesterday and every flight out of TJ was crazy expensive. In my mind, I thought it was way too expensive. It was over 500 bucks each out of TJ. Yeah, it was ridiculous july prices oh. are crazy and the cheapest out of san diego non-stop like minimum was 750 F- flights were crazy Jeez, wow. so i started looking at LA. a lot cheaper dude i know that's telling my fiance i was like yeah. a let if these are the prices a let's cancel cabo and we could just go to freaking barcelona for that price like what so anyways um i started looking at la and la is actually affordable i find a jet blue 350 bucks each uh Round trip, nonstop, LA to Cabo, three fifty. I place my order in, and when I put my credit card in, I hit confirm order, and it the little circle spinning wheel is on for a little while, and I'm like, what the hell? And then it goes, oops. oops. Either the no seats, tickets. either the seats you chose are taken, or the price has increased, and it, and I was like, what the hell? I, this has never happened to me. So I hit refresh. I try and go back. It won't let me place the order. It won't let me place the order. And then finally, I just close the page. I go back. Then the price goes up to $600 each, $1,200 total. Same oh flight, God. same everything as I ordered. That's believable. Yeah. Well, that is... come to Loretto. 
<laughs> well, we ended up, and you know what's funny is then then now we go back to Google Flights and I search uh, out of TJ, and we ended up finding one for about a little under four hundred bucks each. Somehow. You better make sure the parking's available. Yeah, I we got to pay. No, no, we're parking in the U.S. Yeah. You park in the U.S. You walk across. Don't do what we tried to do. Yeah. Well, Scott, we got about a we we got about a minute here, dude, before we have to wrap yeah. the segment up. Any, yeah. any final words? Peace out. You want to uh, do a spot? No, nah, no spots. You guys can handle that. Um, I'm just playing. I would say. Spots. Oh, you are. Yeah. It's a good idea. Um, just I hope that I get there safely now. You know, after this comedy of errors today. I hope that a you guys find some tequila and you start drinking again at the airport. That is always. Oh no, dude! No. No, after no, no. What no, happened no. to me last night? No. No. What were you is... drinking? Sake. Dude, really good sake. But you know the guy who was on the show from Setting Sun told us about sake. So I hope you took an educated uh, lesson in sake when you got there, sat down, showed off what you knew. Just it, was, it was my boy Blair's 50th birthday. We had five guys, and everybody just got, like, okay. everybody's on a group text today just talking about how badly they're hurting. Slapped. Slapped. Well, hey, yeah. dude, uh, enjoy, yeah. enjoy your vacation, man. <laughs> and uh, and good luck, Rachel. Enjoy, enjoy your day this trip, man. We'll talk to you guys. <laughs> All right. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM. A new generation of radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Kaplan and crew tonight is brought to you by BMW San Diego. Your certified BMW dealer, serving drivers throughout San Diego and their surrounding areas. Catch Kaplan and crew Monday through Friday at 3 p.m. If you've listened to Scott Kaplan the last 20 years, you know one thing. He likes to stir up some sh**. A new generation of radio, the all-new and mightier 1090. Join Erica Cardenas on Doing More as she introduces you to ordinary people working side by side to confront tremendous challenges and make a positive impact in their community. Hi, I'm Erica Cardenas. Join me on the next Doing More as we celebrate the many accomplishments of women during Women's History Month. Doing More, Sunday and Monday night on Your View. Sponsored by The Barnes Firm, partnering with Shelter to Soldier and saving lives two at a time. Visit thebarnesfirm.com slash shelter to soldier and help save more lives. Thank you for interviewing with us. Tell me a little something about yourself. What are your greatest strengths? Well, my differences are my strengths. Those of us with intellectual and developmental disabilities are highly motivated. We are creators. We are leaders and innovators. We are changing the face of work for the better, one customer at a time. Thank you for sharing that with me. I'm confident that you would make an incredible addition to our team. It is time we start building a workforce that is diverse, inclusive, and equitable. A workforce that recognizes that our greatest strengths lie in our differences. Join us at DeliveringJobs.org. That's the wrap. Here's Kaplan Accrued tonight's 60-second timeout with Haley Stasiak. Two hours, 59 minutes, and 54 seconds. That's how long it took Chula Vista native Des Linden to set the 50K world record in the Brooks Running 50K and Marathon in Eugene, Oregon on Tuesday. Linden averaged 5 minutes and 47 seconds per mile on the 31-mile run. She beat the previous record set by Great Britain's Allie Dixon by more than seven minutes. Lyndon is a two-time Olympian who has run over 20 marathons. In 2018, she became the first American woman to win the Boston Marathon since 1985. Now, I don't know about all of you, but if I'm running, something's probably chasing me, so you better start running too. Either that or I'm likely late for something. But in all seriousness, congrats to Miss Linden on the incredible accomplishment of setting the world record. That's your 60 second timeout. Now back to more Kaplan and Crew tonight. Kaplan and Crew tonight's 60 second timeout is presented by Your View.
Rich Eisen here inviting you to catch my show, The Rich Eisen Show, on our flagship radio station, The Mightier 1090. We're on every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to noon Pacific time. You'll like what you hear. If not, that's just, uh, I guess, too bad. A new generation of radio, the all-new and Mightier 1090. Are you living in an underserved community and facing adversity? Do you have a desire to start or grow your own business? San Diego State University's Lavin Entrepreneurship Center, the Center for Leadership and Entrepreneurial Studies, and community partners invite you to participate in our community bootcamp. The bootcamp provides intense, hands-on exposure to the fundamentals of launching and growing a successful venture. Register today at leadershipcentersw.org. Join Erica Cardenas on Doing More as she introduces you to ordinary people working side by side to confront tremendous challenges and make a positive impact in their community. Hi, I'm Erica Cardenas. Join me on the next Doing More as we celebrate the many accomplishments of women during Women's History Month. Doing More, Sunday and Monday night on Your View. Sponsored by The Barnes Firm, partnering with Shelter to Soldier and saving lives two at a time. Visit thebarnesfirm.com slash shelter to soldier and help save more lives. Let's take it up a notch with Kaplan Accru tonight's premium boost, powered by the mightier 1090. San Diego is a great place for deep sea fishing because it's home of the largest sport fishing fleet in the world. You can go on a half day trip, a full day trip, multi day trip, all the way up to 18 days to catch tuna and wahoo, or just locally here to catch yellowtail. When booking a deep sea fishing excursion out of San Diego, there's several resources. And of course, the San Diego landings have uh, great web pages seaforthlanding.com, fishermanslanding.com, pointlomasportfishing.com are the perfect resource to book your next fishing vacation out of San Diego. What you need to do if to have fun in the sun while you're out fishing is, of course, you'll have to obtain a California fishing license or a Mexican fishing license, depending on where the trip goes, and then get set up with tackle. All the landings have all the tackle for rental, and they'll give you all the guidance on the boat for catching a lot of fish here in San Diego. Uh, what you should wear out on the water when you're fishing here in San Diego? Layers, and that's the key because you're probably not gonna get very wet uh, because uh, you're going to go out on a nice day, but just be prepared for layers because it can get pretty cool on the water. You know, summertime is always the best from, I would say, June through September, but prime months actually in San Diego, September, October are probably the two prime months, best water conditions and probably the most abundance of fish. So as far as taking your fish home, they'll fillet the fish for you on the boat and put it into a package for you. Or you can use one of the local processors like Fisherman's Processing that'll vacuum seal and freeze your fish so that you can put it in your cooler and take it home and eat it. Depending on how long your excursion is, you can go anywhere from a half day trip for around $50 plus your license, all the way up to a multi-day trip that maybe costs several hundred dollars per day. But a full day trip is going to cost you about $150 a day, depending on the uh, Mexican license or California licenses that you need to get. Kaplan Accrued Tonight's premium boost is powered by the Mightier 1090. Kaplan Accrued Tonight is brought to you by BMW San Diego, your certified BMW dealer, serving drivers throughout San Diego and their surrounding areas. I've been a part of this community for a long time, and giving back is what we do. That's why I'm so excited to tell you about the San Diego Giving Back Raffle, a benefit for Ronald McDonald House Charities of San Diego. Grand prize is this $4 million luxury home, or you could win a car, vacation, or cash. Everyone is guaranteed to win a prize. And you'll feel good knowing your raffle purchase goes to help families like the Lechugas. Get your tickets now for the San Diego Giving Back Raffle. 
Join Erica Cardenas on Doing More as she introduces you to ordinary people working side by side to confront tremendous challenges and make a positive impact in their community. Hi, I'm Erica Cardenas. Join me on the next Doing More as we celebrate the many accomplishments of women during Women's History Month. Doing More, Sunday and Monday night on Your View. Sponsored by The Barnes Firm, partnering with Shelter to Soldier and saving lives two at a time. Visit thebarnesfirm.com slash shelter to soldier and help save more lives. Thank you for joining us. Catch Scott Kaplan and crew tonight from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific, every Monday through Friday. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM. A new generation of radio, SoCal Sports Talk.